Now that we have the exponent rule for natural logarithm, let's take another look at its graph. Recall, natural log of x is defined as definite integral from 1 to x of 1 over t with respect to t. The way we interpret this, take the graph of 1 over t, then we're going to take the area under the graph between 1 and x. Now, natural log of x is only going to be defined when x is greater than 0. If x is between 0 and 1, we're going to want to switch the limits of integration, and that's going to introduce a minus sign. So, when we're between 0 and 1, natural log of x is negative. Now, let's recall what we have for the graph of natural log of x. First, we have some special values. Natural log of 1 is equal to 0. Natural log of e is equal to 1. e is roughly 2.718, so it's going to be a special number. Then, we'll have that the domain of natural log of x is just x greater than 0. So we're only going to have graph in this region here. Then, we have that the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. Okay, on the region x greater than 0. So it's going to be differentiable where it's defined. That means it's going to be continuous. So we could draw the graph without picking up our pencil. Then we'll have from the derivative that our function's increasing. If we take the second derivative, we'll see that it's concave down. So the only thing we have left is to check on the end behavior, and we're going to get that using the exponent rule. Now, our exponent rule for logarithm states, if we take natural log of a to some power r, we're allowed to take the exponent r and just bring it down in front. We're going to use this to show the following two limits. First, I'll have the limit as x goes to plus infinity, natural log of x is equal to plus infinity. So as we let x go off to the right, that's going to say that the values of natural log of x are going to grow without bounds. They grow very slowly. Okay, you'll note from the graph, it looks like it could go off to a horizontal asymptote if it wants, but it's just going to keep growing. Then, I want the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of natural log of x. It's going to be equal to minus infinity. So as we come into 0 from the right, the values of natural log of x are just going to spike down to minus infinity. So we're going to have a vertical asymptote at 0. Now, to get our limits, the trick we're going to use is substitution. So the idea is, in natural log of x, I want to replace x with another function. It's going to be easier to work with. For our first limit, I'm going to let x be equal to 2 to the u. So the idea here, if I let u go off to infinity, 2 to the u is going to be equal to plus infinity. To see that, just pick your favorite values for u. So you can go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Put that in 2 to the u, you're going to get 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. That thing's definitely going to grow without bound. Now, to do the limit, what we're going to do is I start off with what I want. Limit as x goes to plus infinity, natural log of x. I'm going to replace x with 2 to the u. Now, as u goes to infinity, 2 to the u goes to infinity, so that means x is going to go to infinity, and that way I can hand off this limiting part here. So we're really looking at limit as u goes to plus infinity of natural log of 2 to the u. Now I can use the exponent rule to bring the u down. So we do that. And then you'll note natural log of 2 is just a number. It's roughly 0.693. So I can just pull that out in front of the limit as a constant. So we're going to be left with natural log of 2, which is a number, times the limit as u goes to plus infinity of u. So that limit's just going to be plus infinity. Our constant out in front is roughly 0 0.693. It's a positive number. So our limit is going to go to plus infinity as promised. Next, I want to show the limit as so x goes to 0 from the right of the natural log of x is equal to minus infinity. Here, we're going to do the substitution x equals 1 over u. If we take the limit as u goes to plus infinity of 1 over u, we get 0. So if I let u go off to the right, 
the values of 1 over u are going to get driven down to 0. We also note, as those values come down, they're always going to be positive numbers. So this will be the same as saying that x is going to go to 0 from the right, or through positive numbers. Now, we substitute in our limit. We'll have natural log of 1 over u. Then our limit is going to be from u going to plus infinity instead of x going to 0 from the right. Now, 1 over u is equal to u to the minus 1. So I can use the exponent rule for logarithm to bring the minus 1 down in front. So we have this expression here. If I replace u with the x, we have the limit that we worked out on the previous board. So it's going to go to plus infinity. Now, there's a minus sign in front. So our answer here is going to be minus infinity as promised. So final note, we interpret our first limit. So we have that the limit as x goes to plus infinity, natural log of x equals plus infinity. Recall, natural log of x is going to be the area under the graph of 1 over t between 1 and x. So if we're going to let x go off to plus infinity, what we're doing, we're going to take these areas and just keep adding a little bit more and a little bit more as we go off to infinity. The result is you take all of this area, it's going to be infinite. So if you want to paint that area, you need an infinite amount of paint. Now, this will be important later on when we do sequences in series. We're going to be interested in taking infinite lists of numbers and trying to add them up. So one we'll be interested in be 1 plus a half plus a third plus a fourth, and so on. We're going to be able to use this result to show that the sum of this list is going to be equal to plus infinity. So I'll leave it as an exercise for you to figure out what this picture here has to do with this result. Okay, if you can't wait, sequences and series.